Hello and welcome. This is Jed with Limo Anywhere. I'll be your host today for the first of three walkthrough onboarding webinars. Today we'll be going over the initial setup. On the second walkthrough onboarding webinar, we'll be going over how to use the system. And on the third walkthrough onboarding webinar, we'll be going over extended functionalities. For today, we'll be going over your initial setup. So before you can start using Limo Anywhere and creating reservations, you want to configure it for use for your company. Uh, so starting here on your contact information page, you want to go and enter your contact information. All of this information that you enter in here will be on display in your outgoing paperwork, such as your reservation confirmations or your reservation receipts. You'll see that contact information on display in the upper left corner. Right? And the reason why we bring this up is because there's a place to upload a company logo for your system on the bottom of the contact information page. If you choose to upload a company logo for your company, we recommend that you include your contact information on the logo itself, or at the very least include your phone number and your email address, because once you upload a company logo here, it's going to replace all of this contact information that's on display in your outgoing paperwork. The next thing we'd like to take a look at are the line items on your reservations. Right, so the line items on your reservations will be located here on the bottom right corner of your reservations. And this is where your rates are going to get mapped to. So to manage your line items in your system, we're going to go to My Office, Rate Management tab. And that'll take us here to the System Rate Manager by default. On this page, we're going to go ahead and click on Show All and hit Go. And that will display all the line items that appear on your reservation. And this is where you can manage those line items. For example, on my reservations, I've got standard gratuity already set for 20%. If I wanted to change that value for my standard gratuity for reservations going forward, I'd locate it here on my uh, system Rate Manager, select Edit to load it up, and then over in the upper right corner where it has a default amount of 20%, I could change it to 0% here and save it. And now my standard gratuity would be set for 0% for all my reservations going forward. All right, and this is where you can make any changes to your line items that you need other than the default amounts. Right. The next thing we want to look at are how to set up your rates in your system. Now, there's three different types of rates that you can set up in your system. There are flat rates, hourly rates, and distance-based rates. For each one of these rates, you're going to be setting them up in different parts of the system. For flat rates, we're going to stay here on the Rate Management tab, go to Fixed Rates and Zone Setup, for hourly rates and distance-based rates, we're going to go here to Company Resources tab, Vehicle Types, and set them up per vehicle type. So let's start with setting up your flat rates first. So we'll go back here to Rate Management tab, Fixed Rates and Zone Setup. And when we select that, it's going to ask us to select the rate matrix. Right now, the only rate matrix you'll probably have is, will be the default. And this is the default because it's selected as your default. All right. Later on in your system, you might have several rate matrices listed under your fixed rates and, and zone setup, but only one of them will be selected as your default. Whichever one is selected as your default is the one that you, you'll be setting up for your general public, the one that your general public will be, be getting their rates from. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the rates for the default rate matrix. Click on default to open that up. And in here is where you will set up your flat rates. Now to set up flat rates in Limo Anywhere, you'll need to do two things. The first thing you'll need to do is to create and define the zones in your service area. And zones are going to be city locations or airports. Once you've defined the zones in your service area, then you can start building the rates for those zones. All right, you can choose a pickup 
and drop off. Enter the name of the, uh, the vehicle type you want to use for this uh, route. And then enter your flat rates here. So let's go over setting this up. All right, the first thing we want to set up are the zones. So we'll click on this button with the three periods. That'll open up the Manage Zones window. This is where we'll define our city zones and our airport zones. So let's start with defining a city zone first. We'll use New York here as an example. Click on that and hit edit. All right, so creating your zones, your city zones, uh, the first thing you want to do is set up your zone code and zone description. And that's going to be whatever you want to use to help identify what city you're entering in for that zone. Uh, for this zone code, we could have put in NYC. We could have put in New York City spelled out. We could have put in the word Apple. Uh, we could have put in zone one, zone two, east zone, west zone, whatever you wanted to uh, use for your zone code. The only restriction for the zone code, you don't want to use the FAA code of an airport for the zone code of a city. You want to reserve those for your airports. So once you've created your zone code and zone description for your city, you'll enter your city name here, designate the state that that city is located in, and for your zip codes, if I remove this zip code from this example, that would still make this zone code valid. All right, is to just make New York City one very large zone. All right, so to carve up a large zone like New York, we use zip codes. So I place that zip code back in. That would then relegate this zone of New York to just this zip code of New York, so that this rate that we have in here would only be relevant if the pickup was in this zip code of New York. Now, if I want to make New York bigger or make this particular zone for New York bigger, I can add in additional zip codes. All right, so if I add in these zip codes, that now makes this zone code of New York as large as the, the zip codes of New York. And now I can then create separate zones of New York with other zip codes. That way I can create different rates from these different parts of New York. Now for your airports, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this icon here to reset our, our managed zones window. For airports, the zone code you wanna use is the FAA code of the airport. So if I wanna enter in the airport for JFK, for the airport in New York, I put in JFK here and put in John F. Kennedy Airport here for the name of the airport. Now for the city, state, and zip code, for airports, we're gonna leave those blank. So once I enter in the FAA code of the airport and the name of the airport, I can go ahead and add that in. Once you have all the zones created in your Manage Zones window, then you can start building the rates between those zones. All right, so the zones that they've created in here are for New York and Dallas, so I have one for JFK. So if I wanted to create a, a, a rate from New York to JFK, I'd choose my pickup, choose my drop off, select the vehicle I wanted to create this rate for, then enter the rate here that I wanted to charge my customers to take this vehicle from this pickup to this drop off. Right, and if I want to include any tolls, parking, or taxes, I go and enter those rates here. Otherwise, you'd leave that blank. Before I add this rate in here, I want to make sure that I have a check mark for create reversed rates. That way, it'll create the return rate from New York City back to the airport. Go and add that rate in. And as you can see, now I have the rate from JFK to New York as well as the return trip from New York back to JFK for the same price. And if I need to make any changes to it, I can select that and hit edit, and then make changes as, as, as necessary. Now to make this easier for you, instead of having to enter these zone codes one at a time here in the back office and then entering these rates one at a time here in the back office, we will have provided for you two spreadsheets. 
the first spreadsheet will be for your zones and it will have co columns corresponding to the zone code, zone description, city, state, and zip code. So if you fill out this spreadsheet with all the zones that you want to enter into your system and send this back to us, we can upload those zones into your system for you. On the second spreadsheet we have available for you will be for your rates. And it'll have a column for your vehicle type, your pickup zone, your drop-off zone, a column for your flat rate, and additional columns for your tolls, parking, and taxes. And again, if you don't want to include the tolls, parking, and taxes on your flat rates, you can leave them blank. All right, there'll be additional uh, columns for matrix and is default matrix on this column. And this is just asking what the name of that matrix is. In this case, the name of this matrix is default. So I'd put default here. And it's asking here, is this the default ma rate matrix? And in this case, it is the default rate matrix because it is selected as the default rate matrix. So I'll put true all the way down on my uh, rate spreadsheet. S fill this out with all of your rates. Send that back to us along with your zone spreadsheet. And we can upload the rates into your system for you as well. All right. The next thing we'd like to go over, your hourly rate setup. So for your hourly rate setup, we're gonna go here to My Office, Company Resources, and choose Vehicle Types. Now we wanna go and select the vehicle type to set up our hourly rates on. I'll go ahead and use my SUV. Select Edit Vehicle Type to load it up. Now we wanna to go to the Rates tab. And this is where we can set up our hourly rates. All right, you want to set up your hourly rates under the standard rate field. So for my SUV, I'm going to go ahead and charge $75 an hour for a minimum of one hour. And to the right of that, you'll have where you can set up peak rates. If you set up peak rates over here, I'm going to go ahead and also indicate when these peak rates will go into effect. So for my peak rates, I'll go and set it up for Friday night from 5 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Click update rates to save those rates into your system. All right, and that's how you set up hourly rates in your system. For distance-based rates set up in your system, you'll go to the distance-based rates tab all right, and then you want to set up your distance based rates here. All right, before we set up our distance based rates and even for our hourly rates, let's go ahead and make sure we have that turned on for display in our system. So we're going to go to My Office, Company Resources, Company Preferences. Oh, I'm sorry, My Office, Company Settings, Company Preferences. Go to Reservations. And then for hourly rates, you want to go to Auto Populate Number of Hours into Rate Multiplier and make sure we have that set to Per Hour. And then we go over here to select all the service types that we want to use for, for hourly rates. I'll go ahead and select all. And for our distance-based rates, we want to make sure that we have auto populate distance total set to one fixed rate. And then select all for all of our service types for our distance-based rates. I'm going to save that down here. Click update my company preferences. Now we want to go ahead and set up our distance-based rates. Go back to company resources, vehicle types, choose our SUV, edit vehicle types, go back to rates tab. Now back on distance based rates, we can go and set up those distance based rates on the SUV now. All right? So here we can set it up like a taxi. So if I want to charge $1.50 per mile, I could set it up like that and go and set it, set this to our flat rate over here. Now, if I set this up like this, if I only take a customer two miles, I'd only be charging them $3, which might not be worth my while. So what I normally show my customers for distance-based rates is how to set up a minimum 
rate. To do that, we're going to add two lines to this by clicking this green plus sign twice. There we go. And to set up a minimum on this first line, we want to enter the number one for the first mile and then enter in here how much we want to charge for our minimum rate. And for my minimum rates on my SUV, I'm going to charge $30 minimum. And then here as well, in indicate how far that $30 will get them before I start charging them $1.50. So for my rides, I'm going to let them go for 20 miles before I start charging them $1.50. All right, so what this is saying that we've set up here is it's saying that we, we're going to charge $30 for the first mile, for the next 19 miles, we're not going to charge anything. So that means for the first 20 miles, I'm going to, going to get a minimum of $30. After that 20 miles has been reached, anything over 20 miles, I'm going to start charging $1.50 per mile on top of the $30 I've already collected. So at 21 miles, I should be collecting $31.50. All right, now before we start any, uh, setting up these rates for your vehicles, you might want to go ahead and create the vehicles first in your system. So let's go over set up, setting up how, how to set up your vehicles. All right, so we'll go to edit vehicle type. Uh, I'll, let me just go ahead and click on this icon here so we can reset our screen. You want it to say add new vehicle type so you can add in your vehicle types here. You want to start out with your uh, code for a vehicle type. And make it simple, like for your SUVs, just to type in SUV for sedans. I went ahead and used SED for sedans. So if I want to create a van, for example, I'd put in van here. And then you want to put in the type of van this is. Um, in this case, I want to make it a luxury van. All right, because on the vehicle types, you want to enter in the types of vehicles you have. Later on, we're going to enter the actual vehicles themselves under the fleet. All right, so once we enter in the type of vehicle this is, you want to enter your passenger capacity. So my van will hold up to eight people. And luggage capacity, I'll allow one bag per person. And then for the color code, you want to go and set a color code, especially if you're going to have several vehicle types entered into your system. Uh, this will allow you to be able to determine the vehicle type on your dispatch screen. All right, go ahead and choose that color. And then the next thing you want to set up are the service types to associate with this vehicle type. So for my van, I want to have that available for all all service types. Go ahead and add that in. So now I've added this new vehicle type to my vehicle list. And if I want to create the rates for it, I can then go to the rates tab and set up the hourly rates or the distance-based rates. The last things regarding your vehicle setup would be the long vehicle description and your images, right? Both the long vehicle description and the images that you set up on your vehicle types will be available for display on your online reservation system. So once we've completed setting up your vehicle types, next thing you want to set up are, is your, are, your, are the vehicles on your fleet. So we'll go to fleet next. And as you recall, the vehicle types is where you want to enter the types of vehicles that you have. The fleet is where we're going to enter the actual vehicles themselves. So my fleet, this is where I entered in my sedan. Right, I have a Lincoln Town Car that I've entered in here. We want to go ahead and give it a code. And you want to give it a unique code for each, each uh, vehicle you enter in on your fleet. You want to select the vehicle type to associate with this vehicle so that you get the proper pricing for that vehicle. In this case, this Lincoln Town Car is a sedan, so I need to make sure it's set it to, S, uh, to my sedan here. And then you want to go and enter in the make and model, the year, and the exterior color of that vehicle, enter the vehicle capacity, or the passenger capacity, here and enter your license plate number for that vehicle here. 
once you have all that information in, you can go and add that vehicle to your vehicle list. The rest of the information for this vehicle would be information for, the, for yourself. All right, so let me go and add a new vehicle in. Let me go and add in my Escalade for my SUV. Put in Cadillac Escalade here. And I'll go and give it a code of Escalade 1. And I'll choose the proper vehicle type. Enter the make and model. The year model. And capacity. And then plate number. and add that vehicle in. There we are. So now I have my SUV and a sedan entered into my fleet. Next thing we want to set up in your system would be your drivers. So let's go to drivers next. All right, to enter your drivers into your system, uh, you want to go ahead and enter in the required fields with these red asterisks. So for the driver I've entered in, I'm going to put his first name in here, his last name here, entered his cell phone number, and entered the cell phone provider here. Now, if your drivers are going to be using the Driver Anywhere app, you want to make sure that you've created a username and password for that driver down here under the web access section. Once you've got that information in, you can add the driver to the driver list, and then you can edit the rest of the driver information as needed. But this would be the required fields that you want to use to set up that driver initially. And once you have that information entered in, if your drivers will be using the Driver Anywhere app, you want to make sure you go to the Driver Anywhere Settings tab and make sure you set up the Driver Anywhere Settings for use for your driver. So if your driver will be using the Driver Anywhere app, you want to make sure this first checkbox is selected. This will allow them to use the Driver Anywhere app once they have it downloaded on their phone. All right, the other settings for Driver Anywhere. If we put a check mark for Edit Trip Drivers, this would allow your drivers to enter in trip times in the app. Trip times such as when they've arrived on site, when they've picked up the passenger, and when they've dropped off the passenger. If you put a check mark for C rate data, edit rate data, this would allow your drivers to enter in additional rates in the app. The additional rates they have access to enter in would be limited to, toll, to tolls, parking, extra gratuity, miscellaneous fees, and wait time. And if you select C rate data, then the process payments becomes available for you to select. If you select process payments for the driver, this would allow the driver to actually collect payments from the passenger if payment was still due at the end of the trip. If you don't want your drivers to collect uh, payments from the passenger at the end of the trip, you want to leave this unchecked. Now of the payments that they can collect, if this is selected, they would be able to collect a cash payment and a credit card payment. Credit card payments would only be available for them to collect if you have a gateway already set up in your system. Now, if you are allowing them to collect, uh, to collect payments at the end of the trip, you have an option here to view, to allow them to view the full rate breakdown, All right? So if you select that, they'll be able to see an itemization of the payment for that trip. Otherwise, if that's not selected, they'll just see the total amount due from the passenger. Let's take a quick break from the driver uh, from the driver setup and let's go over the driver anywhere setting statuses that would be available to your drivers all right now I should go through uh, a little bit more information regarding statuses in general so we're going to go here to my office and then under company settings we're going to choose system settings and then choose system mapping at the bottom and that'll take us here to the workflow page. And this is where we'll see 
uh, where all the statuses are set up in your system according to the workflow of your of your limo anywhere system all right the operator flow will show the workflow in the back office and the driver flow will show the workflow that your drivers will use in the driver anywhere app so before we get to the driver anywhere settings or statuses let's go over the operator flow and the status is set up in your back office. All right, so any reservation created through the online reservation system is gonna come into your system with the status of online eForm in. Then when you accept that reservation in your system, it's gonna update the status from online eForm in to unassigned. Now any reservation you create in the back office, when you create it, it'll, create, it'll be created in the unassigned status. Right, so any reservations that you then prepare for your drivers, once you have it created and saved, uh, you wanna go ahead and set the status to dispatched and select the driver and vehicle and save that reservation or, or save it on the dispatch screen. When you do that, it's gonna send a notification to the driver's driver anywhere app, letting them know that you've offered the driver a trip. And in the app, the driver would have the option to accept or reject that reservation. If the driver accepts the reservation, it's gonna update the status from dispatched to assigned. If he rejects the reservation, it's gonna update the status from dispatched to unassigned. So if it goes to unassigned after you've dispatched to the driver, that, that lets your dispatchers know they need to assign it to a different driver. Now, assuming the driver has accepted that trip and, it, and you see the status go to assigned, when the driver's ready to start that trip, in the app, he's gonna go on duty, select the vehicle that was assigned to them, locate that trip, and click on start trip. When he clicks on start trip, it's gonna update the status from assigned to on the way. All right, and if the driver's doing an airport pickup, the next status he would set would be circling if he has to circle around at the airport. The circling status is the only one that's optional. All right, so if he's not doing an airport pickup or doesn't have to circle around, he can go from on the way directly to arrived once he's arrived on site. All right, the next status he would set after arrived would be customer in car once he has the customer in the car. And then once he's dropped off the passenger and completed the trip, the last status he'll set would be passenger dropped off. And once the driver sets it to the passenger dropped off, if he's set to collect payments, it will then prompt the driver to go ahead and collect payments. Uh, otherwise, if he's not set to collect payments, it will go ahead and remove the trip from the driver's driver anywhere app. All right, so let's go back to driver setup. All right, so back on the driver setup. Next thing, this is, is the payroll setup. All right, so in Limo Anywhere, you can set up driver payroll, or at least you can set up what we call pay schedules to track your driver's payroll. You can set up your pay schedules one of three ways. You can set it up to pay them per hour. You can set them up to pay them a fixed amount per trip, or you can set it up to pay them a percentage of the trip itself. And you can create as many pay schedules as you want that way you can pick and choose whichever pay schedule you wanted to apply on any particular trip for a driver. Now for each pay schedule you do create, you will need to create it per vehicle type. All right, if you create a single pay schedule uh, for each vehicle type, so meaning if I had three pay schedules, one for each vehicle type, then on a reservation, depending on the vehicle type selected, uh, the system would then be able to select the correct pay schedule to apply to that reservation. Now, if you have multiple pay schedules, each with uh, multiple selections of the vehicle types, then you'd have to pick and choose which pay schedule to apply for that driver on that reservation. Let's go ahead and set up an example of a pay schedule here. So I'll set up an example for an hourly pay. So for set up an hourly pay, I'm going to enter in here how much I want to pay per hour for, to my driver for that trip. So on these trips, I'll pay my driver $25 per hour. 
and I want to go ahead and give him 100% gratuity. So down here, I'll put a check mark on gratuity, pay him $100, 100%, excuse me, of the gratuity. Now I want to go ahead and give this a pay schedule name. In this case, I want to call it hourly 25. That way I, I know that I'm paying him $25 an hour for this particular pay schedule. And if I want to be more specific, I could put SUV so that I know that I'm, this is the one for the uh, hourly rate of $25 for the SUV. Save that. And that'll add it to the stored schedule list over here. So now I can create one for the sedan if I wanted to. And call it hourly 25 sedan or hourly 20 if I wanted to pay a different rate for the sedan. All right? Or if I wanted to pay create one for a fixed rate, I call it fixed 50 sedan. And if I wanted to create a percentage rate one, I'd call it percentage 80. I have to pay him 80% then I choose all the base rates and, and set this up for 80% to pay to the driver. All right, and once you have all your pay schedules created, then on the reservation, when a reservation is completed, you can then pick and choose on the settlement screen which, which of the pay schedules you wanted to apply for that particular trip. Once you've created all the pay schedules for this particular driver, if you have any other drivers entered into your system, you can then use the copy from another profile setting to copy all the trips that you created on this driver for any other driver. All right, and the last thing regarding your driver setup is the driver portrait. The driver portrait section is where you can upload a picture of your drivers to be sent out to your customers using the scheduled email or custom form module in your system. All right, next thing we want to set up is your airports in your system. So for airports, we're going to go here to airports. And on this screen, you want to go ahead and click on show all. That'll refresh the screen to show all of the inactive airports in your system. And what you want to do on this list is you want to scroll down and locate the airports that you're going to work with. All right, click on edit airport to load it up and you want to change the status of that airport from inactive to active and then click update airport so that airport is now on your active airport list. For any airports that you want to include on your list that are not on this uh, inactive list, you can add them in manually. All right, just make sure it says add new airport Then you can add in your airport here by putting the FAA code of that airport. And put the name of the airport in here. Uh, usually you'll do this for your regional airports or private airports. And then click on add new airport to add it to your list. Now the airports you add on here will be available on your reservations under the airport interface. So once we add that airport into the airport list, we'll be available here on your airport list. And the airlines on your reservation will be right here. Now if you don't have an airline uh, on this list that you need, you can add that airline here. The airline section under the company resources tab. To add an airline in, you want to put in the FAA code of that airline, name of that airline, and then click Add New Airline, and that'll add it to the list. For private airlines, we'll go here to private airlines. For private airlines, you'll need to select the airport that they're flying out of. All right, so if it's a private airline, uh, a private airport they're flying out of, you need to make sure you enter that in on your airport list so you can select it here. You use signature error as an example. So this one is flying out of DFW, uh, Dallas Love Field, excuse me. Choose the airport it's flying out of. Enter the name of the private airline here 
then make sure you enter in the actual address uh, for that private airline where you need to take where your drivers need to take the uh, passengers. All right, even if it's at the airport itself, go ahead and put in the address of that airport. And then finally, on your company resources list, is the points of interest. Now, for points of interest, we do recommend you enter in as many points of interest as you can. Uh, these points of interest will be available on your reservation screen right here under POI. All right, so if you select the, the point of interest that you've entered in your back office, it will go ahead and fill in the address that you've, you've, uh, you've saved for it. All right, so for this one, I went ahead and chose the category of hotel, entered the name of the hotel here, and entered that address here. So now it's available for me to select and enter on my reservations here. All right, the next thing we want to set up in your system is the online reservation system. All right, so for the online reservation system, the first thing you want to do is go to My Office, Company Settings tab, and go to System Settings. All right, clicking here will take us to the Service Type section where we need to make sure our service types are set up for our online reservation system. All right, so I've already got two service types set up from airport, hourly is directed. Let me go ahead and turn on to airport. So to set up your service types for your online reservation system, you want to go and select the service type you wanted to use, in this case, to airport. You want to select this, the rental agreement for this service type. Then select the pricing type you want to set up for this service type. All right, so we'll click on here. And you have the options for hourly rates, distance based rates, or fixed rates. So for my airport runs, I'm setting those up for fixed rates. Then you want to come down here and choose visible and ORES 4 so that it is available in your online reservation system. And then for custom label name, you want to put in a custom label name here. This is what your customers are going to be able to see on the online reservation system. They won't see to airport. So I'm going to put in here airport departure. Right, that's what they'll see. Then you need to select the locations available for this service type. All right, so for the pickup location, it will be all. And since this is the airport drop off, I'm going to choose airport for the drop off. And I stop, so we select all and save it. So now I have two airport ready to go on my online reservation system with my from airport and hourly as directed. All right, so once you have your service type set up for your online reservation system, we'll go to the online reservation system section, which will take us here to ORES 4 settings tab. And on this screen, we want to scroll all the way down to the billing settings section so we can set up our accepted payment methods. So over here on the right, we want to select all the payment methods that we want to allow our customers to use on the online reservation system. So then select cash, check, and all my credit card options. And now we've got my payment method set up. So once you have your payment method set up, now we want to get the online reservation system attached to your website. So if you're using Limo Anywhere to build your website, the online reservation system will already be attached to your website. If you're using a third party, however, a third party web host, you want to go to my website tab. That way you can choose the method to attach the online reservation system to your website. All right, there's two options. There's the preferred method, which would embed the online reservation system to your website and the alternative method which would place a link on your website that would redirect your customers from your website to the online reservation system. So if you wanted to embed the online reservation system, you would copy this code and paste it into an email and send that email to your web host 
with these instructions right here. You want them to paste the following code on the source of the reservations page on your website. And if they do that, here's what it would look like. All right, so here's an example of the online reservation system embedded on a website. All right, so if we go here to reservations, it'll take us here to where the online reservation system is embedded on their website. If this were using the alternative method, when you click on reservations, it would then take you directly to the online reservation system itself. All right, so this is what the alternative method would look like once they click on the reservation link or the book now button link on your homepage. Also available for your online reservation system are widgets, All right? These widgets are gonna be um, smaller bits of code for the online reservation system, uh, for smaller portions of the online reservation system. Like, so for example, the quick res form uh, is just a smaller version of the online reservation system itself. Uh, it'll be pretty much the reservation tools minus the map. And you can then put that anywhere on your, on your website for example, you could put it here on this portion of your website uh, instead of taking up a whole page for the reservations. And then the quick res form, uh, the quick login form, excuse me. Where did that go? This right here, this login form, uh, that's to replace this login button, uh, not to replace it, but to put it on your website. That way uh, you'll have a much bigger field for your uh, username and password for your customers to enter in to log into their account. The last thing we want to cover regarding your setup is setting up the gateway in your system. So for set up a gateway in your system for credit card processing, we can go to my office, company settings tab, and click on add on modules. And on this screen, that'll take us to the payment gateway tab. And on this screen, we wanna go ahead and click on add gateway. And that'll open up the edit gateway window. And on the edit gateway window, if we uh, click on this drop down arrow, for the type of payment gateway, we'll see a list of compatible gateways that are available for use with Limo Anywhere. All right, to set up a gateway, you wanna select your uh, gateway that you wanna work with. In this case, we'll set it up for authorize.net. And the gateway name you wanna enter in here is gonna be whatever name you wanna enter in to help you identify this. So if you wanna call it my gateway, you can put that to type in my gateway. Right? And then depending on the uh, gateway that you select, they'll send you the credentials to enter in in your back office. So for authorize.net, they'd send you a login and transaction key. If I were to go with Moneris, they'd send us a store ID and an API token to enter in, whereas Stripe would send us a source key to enter in. So depending on which gateway you set up, uh, you go with, you're gonna set up the uh, credentials according to what they sent you. All right, once you have that set up in your system, you will be able to go ahead and start processing credit cards. Now the list of, of uh, gateways, uh, you can, uh, we'll have that available for you. Uh, so you can take that to your bank and check with them to see if they have availability for that gateway set up. Otherwise, you'll need to contact the gateway directly to set up an account with them. All right, and once you've got that set up in your system, I would recommend that you go ahead and set up a test reservation in your system with your credit card uh, on the payment info tab. 
set it up to pay yourself a dollar. That way you can test and make sure that the credit card processing is set up correctly in your system. All right, and if you have any issues with that, uh, or with anything on your initial setup, please give us a call at the support center. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out in getting all of that set up correctly in your system. Uh, if you need to call us, our, our uh, number at the support center is 888-888-0302, option two for support. That concludes today's walkthrough. Thank you for your time and have a good day.